Let's pray and we'll get started. All right. Father in heaven, thank you so much for blessing us, for encouraging us, and bringing us here. We're thankful, Father, for all those who are watching us online. Uh, we're thankful for them and their situation. We pray that that if there's something going on with them, that uh, whatever it might be, that we can uh, that we might say the right things at the right time and and uh, and give them a, a, a an encouraging an encouraging thought, encouraging word. Uh, Father, I pray your blessings upon them as well as they as they watch and as they navigate through this. Father, help us to learn. Uh, help us to have the courage to apply these things to our lives, and thank you so much for the opportunity. Bless us this morning as we worship and as we honor and glorify you and your Son this morning with our with our lives and with our with our thoughts and with our words. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity. Bless our families. Bless all of our families, Father, as we uh, as we move forward, as we strive, Father, to be the very best we can be. Help us in in every aspect of our life, and as we get close to the holiday season, uh, Father, I pray your protection will be on all of us as as many of us will be traveling. And just uh, just protect us, Father, as we do that. Thank you again for loving us, and thank you for your son. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. We're going to be in John chapter 8. Do you want to turn over there? We have talked about this subject before with Jesus. Uh, he is going to testify about who he is. He's been, it's been an ongoing thing that what he's been doing is testifying about who he is with, with this group. He's, he's been at the temple courts teaching this. We don't know the, the chronology of all of this, but we know that he, he is still in the temple courts dealing with the people, dealing with the leadership, dealing with the Pharisees, and, and trying to, to convince them and letting them know this is who I am. And, uh, and of course, they don't believe him. They don't, they don't buy him by who he is, but we dealt with this already in chapter 5. If you remember, he, he, was, he was clarifying his testimony before about the testimony about him, and he said there was four things that testify about him. John the Baptist testified about him. The works that he did testified about him. His father uh, himself testified about him, and he, and he said, and then the Scriptures themselves. He said, if you knew the Scriptures, if you know the Scriptures, you'll know that I am who I say I am. You know, they, they, we looked at a couple of weeks ago, and they said, well, we... There's no prophet could have come out of Galilee. What they did not realize or did not care to realize is he didn't come from Galilee. He came from Nazareth. That's where it says that, that, he would, that, he would, that the prophet would come from, the Messiah would come from Bethlehem. And they didn't understand that. They didn't want to know. They didn't care to know. They had an idea. They had a, set, they had a standard they were going by. It was not a, a biblical spiritual standard about how, how they were, what they were going to believe about him, what they were going to believe that he was, who, they were going to, who he said he was. And so they already had in their mind what they wanted to do. And remember, in chapter 5, they've already decided they're going to kill him. They're just looking for a reason. They've already decided that. You know, the, the, we looked at the woman caught in adultery last week. That was what that was about. They wanted to try to find some way to, uh, to fix him. You know, that where, they could, where they could put him under the, either, either the oversight of the Romans or that he would have been disobedient to the law, and now he's our problem. Now we'll deal with him, and now we turn all the people against him. So... You know, we're going to look at, we're going to start in verse 12. That's where we're going to start. And, uh, and I've got a couple of questions I want to ask you. Uh, first off, I'm going to go ahead and ask you a question. All right? Uh, no, first thing I'm going to do is make sure. Yep, it's off. Make sure my phone's off. Uh, I want to ask you a question. When you think of light, okay, when you think of light in normal everyday life, uh, what benefits does light bring into your life? What benefit does light bring into your life? You can see everything clearly. Okay. As opposed to dark. Okay. All right. What? What? Why is it better that you can see everything clearly and and it's not everything dark? Now remember, we're talking about a physical lifestyle. What is it that benefits you? How does light? Most of us take it for granted. You take it for granted. You go over there and turn that switch on. Lights are going to come on, right? And then people freak out when there's a problem, there's a power shortage, there's a storm of some kind, and you flip the lights on and nothing comes on. You know, many people, of course, us since Hurricane Harvey went through here, most of us, I would say, probably, we're prepared more than we were before, right? People got more flashlights, they got more candles, they got more of everything. You know, they got generators and stuff hooked up to their houses and whatever. So they got more things done to, uh, uh, to compensate for that. Because, you know, for many people, back in that day, you know, there were people without power for weeks, Weeks at a time. So at nighttime, it was dark. You know, if you lived in a subdivision like we do, lived out in the country like we do, when there's no power, 
it is dark. Let me tell you, it's dark out there. And all I got to do, if my lights go off, I got to do is look out a window and I can see yard lights and I can see all the way down. There's no, there's nothing. It's dark, pitch dark. Hold on a minute, Jeanette. Yeah, Tim, go ahead. The light in my life, uh, i give you an example. I was on Messenger the other day and I sent some uh, roses for Veterans Day uh, to keep it going to a whole bunch of people. And somebody said something. They didn't mean to pay it. They said something about me being a scammer. My light shining. A bunch of people came on there and said, hey, Tim's a follower of Jesus. Tim's this, Tim's that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and defended me. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's because of my life. Because it's shined and people see it. And that's, okay. that's my life. Okay. Anybody anybody else? What? How, yes, ma'am. Jeanette. <clears throat> my life is in June when I had surgery and I coded. And my lights went out. And then when I woke up at night to you, and I was like, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so when, when the light went out, when, the, when, when, you, when you coded on the table and the light went out, you said, thank you for bringing me back. You know, I, I'm looking at, I want to know, you know, when I open the icebox, what's supposed to happen? Light Light's supposed to come on. Why? Because I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> All right? I can't see what's at the back of that thing. You know, I can barely see what's at the back of it when, when, the, my, when the light comes on. But I can't see. So so I need the light to show me where things are. Like you said about light turn. You know what? I, I mean, I know my house, and if the light turned out on, I, could, I would know that, that where things are, and I could kind of navigate around them. I came up here the other day, and I'm coming up here, and I'm going to go through the nursery, all right? And I'm, and I'm going to... And I'm going to go to Pam's office, and I come through the front door over there, and I come, and and there's no lights on. It's dark. And it's dark. It's dark. It's dark. And there's a couple of ways you can go in the nursery if you've not been in there. And there's a lot of things on the floor and stuff, and a lot of things in the way. Don't do that. And I got to one wall, and I said, you know what? This is a dumb idea. <laughs> because right where that door I came in down that little bitty hallway, there's a switch right there. And you know what it does? It cuts the lights on that room. <laughs> so I had to I had to find my way back to the door because you couldn't see nothing nowhere. I mean, it was pitch dark. That, you know, and, and I, so the light in our lives, it, it, it lights up and illuminates so that I can see where I'm going. So it gives me direction so I know, you know, that where the obstacles are in, in life. All right? Where I, no. I mean, if you drive around all, all day with no headlights on, if everybody did that, what would happen? We bump into each other bad enough as it is. What happens? Well, what is Jesus going to say here? I am the light of the world. We've already looked at this before in John chapter 3, you know, in, in John chapter 1. I'm, you're not going to turn over there. I'm just going to, they said, in him was life, and that life was the light of all, all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Okay? You know, we're talking here, a couple of y'all talked about the spiritual light. Jeanette and Tim talked about the spiritual light. You know, what I wanted to see was what, what is, physically, what does light mean in our lives? When we, when we don't take it for granted and understand really what it does, it lights up and illuminates and, and shows us where obstacles are. Spiritual light does the same thing. That's what Jesus said. I am the spiritual light. He said, I am the light. Look at what he said in verse 12. He said, when, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. What is he telling me? What is he telling us that light does, that spiritual light does? Now, we know what physical light does. We talked about that for a bit. All right? You know, how desperate it is when it's really dark, how, how you don't know where things are, and you bump into stuff and hurt yourself. What is Jesus saying in this one verse that he's telling us that this spiritual light does for us? What does it do? I won't have to walk in darkness anymore. What did he say in chapter chapter 1? He said the light, the, the light of, of the world was the light of the world. And he said, and the light came and the darkness is not overcoming. Okay? You know, what is it that, that we have we have a responsibility here? I have got to turn on to the light, let the light turn on in my life, and then there will be no darkness in my life. Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to be perfect. We talked about this Friday night. doesn't mean I'm going to be perfect. doesn't mean I'm not going to make any mistakes. All right? It just means that, that the light has been turned on in my life, and I see the obstacle. doesn't mean I'm not going to bump into one of them a time or two. All right? doesn't mean I'm not going to bump into them more than a time or two. I may bump into them from time to time. But the light's still on. And what else does he say? He says something else there. He's gonna. It's gonna help me distinguish when when the light comes on in your house. You know, we have a we have a backyard. In the backyard, we have a little pathway that we made, and it's got it's got white rock. And it, at night, when in the backyard, if there's no lights on, especially when the porch lights not on, it's dark back there. 
And so we got these little light fits that we put down and they're little, little, you know, little solar powered little lights where, where you can see at night, you can see the path. Well, you can see right where the path is, you know. Well, I know where the path is with Jesus. He lights it up. If I'm going to follow him, I don't have to guess where it is. He tells me very specifically, here's the path, follow this path. He said, I'm going to light the path for you so that you won't bump into something. Okay? You won't bump into the steps. You won't miss the guardrail on the steps and, and fall down on the porch. You won't, you won't, a cat won't run across your path and trip you. Okay? You know, we've got five of them. Five of them. You don't have any mice. Nope. Don't have any snakes either. Don't have a lot of gophers either. But, you know, we got one of them. We got one of them that's no. We got a lot of birds. They're not that good. But, but you know. But what they really want to do is they really like us, and so they want to run around. When we come home and they're ready for her to feed them, and you know, and she feeds them all in the same. And they, and so you know what happens? They get in her way. And they can trip you, especially when you're old. They can trip you. And I get to see where the cats are. Okay? I don't have lights on them yet. I haven't figured out a light I could buy from Amazon that that'll work on. How you can invent something to make a man dog? That's yeah. Hey, you, you know, so we, we generally, sometimes we forget to turn, leave the light on the porch. We forget. So we need those lights to at least light the path up. They pretty much know if they haven't said they know where to go. But, you know, I'm looking at this here. What is it going to help me? To, what is the obstacle? It's, look at what he said. He said, I'm alive in the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. What does it do? It helps me to be able to distinguish between the dark and the light. It helps me to be able to distinguish both truth and falsehood. You know, I'll know what's true. I'll know what's false. Watching him, listening to him, he's going to illuminate the truth, and he's going to, and he's going to cast a shadow on the fall. I'll know. I won't have to guess, right? I can figure it out. Can you not figure this out? I think it also takes away our fear. Absolutely. Because when I'm at the ranch, if I don't have a light with me and it's dark, every sound you hear, you're jumping around. Yeah. Whereas in the daytime, you never even think about it. You ever been lost in the woods? Oh, yes, I have. You didn't know where you were? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not That's a good a, feeling. How did how, how, how that feel? Not good at all. When you, thought, when you first saw the first light you saw, and you kind of, you got your bearings now, you know where you're at. And you, oh, now I know. Now I got that it. That was my Look hope. Up, huh? <laughs> when, you, when you found that light, or you found that, 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 Whatever it was, what happened to the to the fear? Like I said, I found my hope. There you went. You see, it's happened to me. It's happened to numerous of yeah. them. You've been you, out hunting the woods, you, you know, know and you know, and, and there's you know, there's a lot of places you go to. Everything out there will stick you, stab you, or bite you. And in the dark, it all looks the same. And it all sounds the same too. Yeah. You know, everything bad sounds the same. It sounds worse. Huh? It sounds worse in the dark. It sounds. It sounds. <laughs> it, sounds <laughs> it sounds deadly in the dark. Yeah, it does. It does. Because it you know, is. I, I have heard a panther scream. That is That will chill you to the bottom of your soles of your feet. And if you're in the dark and you hear that, you know, you are lunch. And it sounds like a woman screaming at first. I, I can tell you, you know what you feel like. I'm a lunch. And I've been just put on the menu. <laughs> and that, you know, in, in our spiritual walk, how many of you have been afraid? You know, I was really afraid when I was lost. You know, I remember Pete telling me, he said, I don't want to be afraid anymore. I don't want to be lost anymore. I don't want to be alone anymore. That's what he told me. When I asked him, why do you want to do this? Why do you want to, why do you want to study? What, you know, and so that's why I can confidently say he wasn't lost anymore. He wasn't alone anymore. He didn't have any fear anymore. And now he's gone home. You know, and it's a beautiful thing to be a part of that and to know that Jesus brought that to us. Now, look at what else he says. Now, I said, the Pharisees challenged him. Here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. In other words, your testimony is not sufficient. They've said this before. This is not the first time this has happened. Chapter 3 it happened. Chapter 5 it happened. You know, so they, and listen to what Jesus said. Jesus answered, even if I test... Now, this, you say, why is this important again? Because when we get to verse 24, this is going to be really important. There is a life and death statement in verse 24. And I know I could have said, there's a verse coming up, this life and death. I just told you, and I saw some of you look down like this, and you're looking at verse 24. You see what it said, right? Didn't you? No, nope. next Look at what he said. <laughs> I know. I'm not going to leave it till next time. This guy, we got to get to it today. It said, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, for I know where I come from and where I am going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I'm going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are true because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. 
in your own law it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. Now, for Jesus, how much credibility does that give in his testimony? How much? For Jesus. When Jesus says it, how much te how much credibility does it give? To, when they say, Everything. your testimony is not sufficient. Everything. Everything. Yeah. Because he knows, I know where I came from. I know what he told me. I know what he said. I'm only repeating what he told me to say. So I know that my testimony is valid because he said it. All right? So he said, I don't care what you say. And why, nurses? Because y'all are looking at it from human standards. What are the human standards they're looking at? What are their human the standards they're looking at? Huh? They're, they're looking at the law. Okay? They're looking at the law. What What else? What's the, what, What's their human standards they're looking at? Proof. I got proof. Well, you were born, you came from Galilee. Doesn't matter they didn't, that it was true. That he really was born in Bethlehem. Doesn't matter. Their, their human standards said, well, I already know what I know. And you can't convince me I'm not true, I'm not, that I don't know what I know. Because I know what I know. Sound, does that sound familiar? Yeah. Sound like the same kind of rhetoric we get in the world today. Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, I know what I know. It don't matter what you say. I know what I know. You know, I'm sure there was people that are, that are in, involved in people's lives. Involved, they don't care what anybody said. They still believe you're a scam. Okay? They don't matter. No matter what a bunch of people said. Well, they don't know nothing. I know this guy. And because I think I know, he, that must be true. And that's just the way people are today. Well, in Jesus' day, it was the same way. He said, well, you're not, you know, uh-uh. We, you can't convince us. Miracles didn't matter. Testimony didn't matter. God coming down twice and saying, this is my son. No matter. No, that matters. Now, look at what, he's, what they say. Then they ask him, where's your father? Where's your father? What are they looking for? What's a human standard? What's a human standard? Where's Joseph? Where's Joseph? And it, Joseph may be dead already by now. We're pretty sure that Joseph is dead by now. Okay, so so where's where's your father at? You say it, you, me, and my father. They have no, because because he was saying that he was equal with the father, making himself one with the father, that's why they're trying to kill him. They don't believe it. So what's the human standard? Show us your father. Show it to him. Pull him out and say, Dad, come on up here. I want you to talk to him. I want you to tell him. Come on up here. And they, they said, where is your father? You do not know me or my father. Jesus replied, if you knew me, you would know my father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the temple courts near the place where the offerings were were put yet no one seized him because his hour had not yet come this is this is something we see we've seen this before there was a plan okay that we know happened before the foundation of the world hebrews tells us that genesis tells us there's a plan in chapter three tells us there's a plan here's the plan you know this is going to happen this is going to happen this is going to happen and all through the old testament that plan is starting to unfold 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 <coughs> and jesus said there's going to be a time frame for this plan and there's going to be a time frame for the events to happen. And only with, when that time comes will these events happen. Because God set this plan in motion. And because they want to kill him, don't mean they got the, they don't mean they got the ability to kill him. Because time hadn't come yet. It has to be done on a certain way. certain time. It's got to be done a certain, how, a certain process has to happen. Okay? You understand all that? You understand all that? Why? To fulfill what God says needed to happen, why it needed to happen, it has to happen the way God said it. Yeah. They can't kill him today because today ain't Passover. Okay? Today ain't Passover. They can't kill him today. And they're not going to be able to get their hands on him today. Now, look at what happened. Once more, Jesus said to them, I am going away and you will look for me and you will die in your sins where I go. You cannot come. You know, what is what is what is he making a, a statement about here? All right. He said, you're going to look for me, but you've been looking for me and you ain't found me yet. He said, you know what's going to happen? You're going to die in your sins. But you ain't going to find me. And look at the look at the response that they say. They made the Jews ask, will he kill himself? Is that what he said? Are you kidding me? Where did you get that from? How'd that come out of that? Trying to justify their mindset? They said, oh, well, he must be going to kill himself. That's why we can't. What? See, their standard is we're going to look at everything through the prism of the world. I'm going to look at everything from the prism black and white. Here's what it is. Sadly, we have a lot of people in the world today, that's what they do. Okay? They look at they look at the world from a human perspective. Does this make any sense to you what we're doing? Does any of this make any sense to you? Logically, 
to people in the world, it makes absolutely no sense to do what we do. I remember when I first started going to church. I said, man, I ain't going to church four or five times a week. You kidding me? No, I'm not doing that. Because it didn't make any sense to me. It didn't make sense until I became a part of it and started to say, oh my, now I understand. But from a world perspective, what you to get up on Sunday morning and get dressed and go to church, for a lot of folks, man, we're getting up and going fishing. We're going hunting. Man, we're going camping on Friday, man. Man, I got a weekend. I'm going. I'm gone. I'm out of here. That's what makes sense to them. This doesn't make sense to a lot of people. Living for Jesus and becoming a servant to all makes absolutely no sense. Does it make any sense? Does it? Honestly, does it make any sense following a dead guy? It's That's what you're dead, doing. Huh? But he's not dead. But, that, but from the world perspective and their standard is, you're following a dead guy. You're listening to a dead guy. That's their perspective, right? So if you look at it from a human perspective, we're no different place than Jesus was. The, many people in the world have no idea. Now, and I say that because there are people in the world today, they want to play this game. They want to play it. They want to play church. They want to go, well, I'll go when it's convenient. I'll serve when it's convenient. I'll give my money when it's convenient. I'll do this, I'll, whatever, when it's convenient. But if it's not convenient, I'm going to do it because, you know, God loves everybody. And he really wants me to be happy. And he really wants me to be healthy. And he wants me to be wealthy. And he wants me to be happy. So, you know, and I, and I found a verse in there that says, Jesus came to give me life and give it to me abundantly. Well, that means that he wants me to he wants me to have abundant life. Well, for me, abundant life, I get to go hunting on Sunday. I get to go camping and go hunting. It gives me a really it makes me a really happy happy dude. I'm a really happy camper. I'm good. That's from a human perspective. This makes you know, I and I've been there. Been there when, when every weekend I'm gone. I'm going hunting. I'm hunting all the time. And I looked around and said, you know, because this didn't make any sense to me. Didn't make the kind of sense it does now. Now I look at it and say, oh, man. Now, I don't fault anybody because that's what they're doing. I'm not throwing stones at anybody. I'm just saying at some point you will mature to a place you'll look around and say, you know, of course my wife helped. My wife helped. You know, she helped some. She said, you can't keep doing this. This is not good. You're not going to keep doing this. Kind of I don't know if she said that in those words, but, but you know, it was very obvious that, like that, said words. that I would, that, you know, this was not healthy. It was not healthy is what it was. And she was bringing that to my attention, that this was not healthy. In a very good way, very positive way, I, I might add. You know, uh, do this or else. No, I'm not going to do no. you know, it's, it's a, But, you know, I mean, but that's why I needed a soul. I, that's why I needed her to kind of kind of navigate me back to where I needed to be and, and to make sense out of this. I had three little boys at home. You know, I, you know, of course, they weren't old enough at that point where they could go with me all the time. So from a human perspective, man, I'm, man, I'm, I'm providing for my family. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 I'm spending thousand dollars to bring home an animal that weighs about sixty pounds. <laughs> that's providing for your family. Yeah, that's that that that'll that'll really fly. That dog will hunt. And I'm going, well, you know, man, you know, it, it rejuvenates me. Every weekend you're driving clear to junctions, that's rejuvenation. Yeah, man. That, that don't you know? I'm a, a better person for it. You know. And and again, I'm saying, you know. The perspective that we look at this from sometimes taints us because we look at it from a human perspective. And I'm saying, okay, you know, I, yeah, I got, I got it already. Well, here is you know, Jesus said, you're never going to find me and you're going to die in your sin because you will not see me from the perspective I tell you to. Sadly, we're, we're supposed to be an evangelistic church because that's going on today. Same thing's happening today. Okay. I'm, I'm telling you, same thing's happening today. People are going to die in their sin. They're dying every day in their sin. Yo, what, what was his name? What was his name? Uh, Marty. Yeah. There was a there was a guy that that, that y'all noticed in the paper. A guy got killed the other day. Got shot out in Mission Valley. Three of three people got killed. One of them thing was Marty. Y'all have no idea who he was, do you? Uh, I do. Yeah. No, well, who he is. Yeah. I, now I know who he was. I remember now. Mm. He got killed. We baptized him here. I don't know that. I didn't know because I didn't get the paper that day, and uh, and we baptized him here. You know, and uh, I don't know where he was. I have no idea where he ended up and what. I don't know. I'm not throwing rocks at him because I don't know. You know, my prayer is is that God took him and was cleaning him and washing him, and he was stumbling through the obstacles, and God had His hands on him. That's my prayer. I don't know that. I don't know. All I'm saying is, you see, that how small a world it is. Way back when we baptized this guy, 
and then we lost track of him and we had to turn him over to God that was God's God's doing there's more Marty's out there guys more Marty's that someday they're gonna come face to face with a gun and somebody's gonna shoot them maybe or they're gonna come face to face in a car wreck and they're gonna die or they're, what if, they're gonna meet their end at some point and the only thing between 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 Pete and eternity was us you understand was us we stood between with the truth we stood between Pete and annihilation I took my class the other day to uh, to Luke chapter 15 on Friday night and I then we were talking about Pete it was the day it was the day that I think it was the day he died I don't remember if it was that day or the next week and I said uh, I said you want to see Pete in the scriptures I said I face it to him I said we went to Luke chapter 16 and it was the parable of the rich man and Lazarus and I said, you see Lazarus? That's Pete. Disenfranchised, alienated, looked down upon, frowned upon. Nobody gave him the time of day except for you guys and, and, and made him feel comfortable. And he died and went to paradise. Okay? That's Pete. And what stood between, what stood between him and annihilation was people with the light to turn the light on for him. We flipped the switch on for him. And Jesus did the rest. That's amazing to me. That doesn't make any sense to me. Because I know where, where many of you come from. You know, and the only way we get to where we are is Jesus had to do something spectacular in our lives. Something unbelievably spectacular in our lives to get us to where we are. It's amazing. It's amazing to be a part of it. So look at what, so he says that. We tell them they, then they're, they're at, their answer is, well, maybe I guess he's going to kill himself then. That's, that's, a, that's a plan. He's going to kill himself. And that, is that what he said? Where I go, you cannot come? But he continued. Now listen to what he says here. You are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I told you that if you that if, that you would die in your sins, if you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be, you will indeed die in your sin. What did he say? Is this a life and death statement? Absolutely. This is a life and death statement. If you do not believe I am the one I claim to be, you will die in your sin. What did he claim to be? My first question when I bring a text up like this to somebody that's lost, I say, what did he claim to be? Tell me what he claimed to be. He claimed to be the Son of God. When he says, I'm the Son of Man, he claimed to be deity. All right? Deity humanized. What else did he claim to be? What else did he claim to be? He claimed to be the light. Last week, he claimed to be, we talked about it, he claimed to be the bread of life, remember? Gives nourishment, spiritual nourishment to us. Here he turns on the light for us. What, what did he claim to be? The Messiah. The Savior of the world. What does that mean to you? That Jesus, this Jesus, who, who this verse right here, and you can put yourself in this verse, you can look at it and say, okay, he said, Jesus tell, is talking to me, he said, you are below, from below, I am from above, you are of this world, I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins if you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be. You will indeed die in your sins. What does he, what does he tell me? What, what has to happen? If he's talking to me, what I, what has to happen to me? Change. Change? You know, we've talked about this before numerous times in the first seven chapters. If you say you believe and you don't obey, then you don't believe. That's right. John made it clear. Makes it clear. Perfectly clear. We've gone to Hebrews. Perfectly clear. If you say you believe and you don't obey, then you don't believe. Actually, he says if you don't, if you love me. You will keep my commandments. So if you don't keep your commandments, yep. you don't truly love him. Yep. People say, well, I believe in Jesus. I believe, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus. Yeah. When you ask, well, who was he? Well, he, he was he a was great man, but I believe in him. You know, you poll 95, 100 people, you're going to get 95 of them say, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus. Does that make them, does that fit them into this text? No. No. Because if you say you believe and you don't obey, then Jesus, God says, you don't really believe. You can convince me that you believe, all right? You can convince me of all kinds of stuff. You can convince me of that. But it doesn't make it so. Jesus said, unless you believe I am the one I claim to be, you will die in your sins. That's life and death, guys. That's life and death for the world that you know. The people in your, in your life that you know, people you work with, people that you're associated with, people that you driving down the street and passing by one car after another. And for every one of us, what is it? Still, if I say I believe and I don't obey, then God says I don't believe. And for me, being here... For me, being here on Sunday, when the door opens, 
is me showing God I believe you. I believe you. That's for me. That's what I need to do. I need to, I need to tell him, I believe, Father, so I'm going to show you I believe because I'm going to be here. I'm going to live my life. Like Tim said, the people can, can say, well, he's a scammer. And then 30, 40 people get on there and say, no, 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 you guys don't understand. You don't understand how the, who this guy really is. You don't understand who, letting his light shine. Does that mean he's going to have no haters in his life? No, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't. But what does God know? And what do the people close to him know? What do I know? What do I know? I watch the evidence of his life, see what he's doing. I know from, from where you came from to where you are now, and I see the difference in you. No, maybe none of the rest of you can. Maybe none of you. Because I've been there with you from the beginning, haven't I? And I've seen how you've grown up. And I've seen what's happened. I've seen the belief process take hold in your life, and I've seen the obedience start in your life. Now, has it been has it been smooth sailing? No, no. Yeah, no, no. Have you been smooth sailing? Not at all. It's been a whole lot of ups and downs, hasn't it? We've been drowning a few times, haven't we? Yeah. We've had to jump in. We've had to jump in and save you a few times, haven't we? But but that's the belief process. I'm going to go in that direction. I'm going to go towards him. And I'm going to let him take care of me. And that's what's been happening. So I watch it. I see I see many of the rest of you see see it in you. And so I know what belief looks like because I see you doing it. I see you being obedient and striving with everything you have. You know, we talked about it the other day. You know, a question she had the other day on Friday night that, that was leading to that way. I'm not going to, you know, you have to come Friday night if you want to hear these questions. You know, but, but you know, struggling with, you know, am I still okay? Am I still all right? Absolutely. People that aren't, don't ask. They don't ask. They don't care. They don't care. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, I want to be one of those and I want to help as many people as I can. I want to find the peace in the world. Don't you? Don't you want to find the peace in the world? I want to find them. I want to find them and I want to I want to introduce them to the light. Now what they do with it, that's going to be up to them. I can't force them. But I want to introduce them to the light. Jesus is the light I want to introduce them because I know what that means in their life. And I don't know I know how it can make it get to the point where it makes sense in their life. Where when when life doesn't make sense and family doesn't make sense, chaos makes more sense than, than sanity, where this comes along and this makes sense. He can turn he can turn it into making sense, can't he? Absolutely. Any questions? I'm gonna stop right here. I got to make a phone call to that guy to bring those plates over. So, so uh, I told him I'd call him as soon as I knew. So, because they they have to box them up and bring them over here. So, uh, but anyway, uh, I just wanted you to uh, I wanted you to see. I wanted to get to that that text. I knew we dealt with this testimony thing a lot already. So I didn't want to deal with. It. I wanted to get to verse 24. This is a great verse, guys, that you can that you can that you can use in person's life. Ask them what do you who do you believe that Jesus is. And what does that mean in your life? What's that going to mean in your life? Okay? We'll see you guys next week. Thanks. We'll